This is the world's finest fighter plane, the Mirage 3.0. The building of this supersonic aircraft in Australia has marked a further milestone in our aviation history. The first of a hundred Mirages for the Royal Australian Air Force had its birth at these two aircraft factories at Fisherman's Bend, Melbourne. 1,500 skilled technicians are working on the Mirage project. It's a busy scene each morning as employees pass the security check to begin the day's work. What, a forgotten pass? Any construction job starts in the drawing office, and the multi-million pounds Mirage project, of course, is no exception. Thousands of drawings imported from France are used in the manufacture of the aircraft, and these all have to be carefully checked by draftsmen. Working from the drawings, technicians see the Mirage taking shape. The fuselage of the aircraft is built in the Department of Supplies factories. The first two Mirages for the RAAF were built in the Dassault works in France, but the remainder are being built in Melbourne. Here in the electrical section, the 1100 wires which go into each fuselage are carefully fitted and soldered into place. In all, there is 14 miles of wire in each fuselage. Heat-treated flush rivets are used throughout the construction of the Mirage, and the rivet holes are drilled to a precise pattern. The rivet holes are milled flush with the skin. Cockpit canopies are formed from perspex 7 sixteenths of an inch thick, and the men who make them work in a constant temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The canopy is buffed to a mirror-like finish to give maximum visibility. The completed fuselage is placed in a cradle and rolled for several hours to empty it of foreign matter such as wire snippings and droplets of solder. The sleek Mirage has an overall length of 43 feet 10 inches and a wingspan of 26 feet 9 inches. It's 14 feet high at the top of the fin. The Commonwealth Aircraft Corporation manufactures the engines, fins and wings of the aircraft. A fin receives its metal skin and the finished component is wheeled away to be thoroughly checked for contour with feeler gauges. The maximum tolerance for the fin is 12 thousandths of an inch. The delta wings consist of a ribbed framework over which an aluminium skin is riveted. The skin is up to 3 sixteenths of an inch thick and the major portion of it is machined from a slab of aluminium two inches thick. This ensures strength to withstand the heat and strain of flying at nearly 1,500 miles an hour. Fuel tanks and hydraulics for the main landing gear are housed in the wings, and these are fitted on a production line at Commonwealth Aircraft Corporation's well-appointed factory. The electrical circuits and hydraulic lines are tested with fault-finding machines. The massive French Snecma engine, manufactured under license, consists of thousands of parts, all a masterpiece of engineering. Here, a component of the engine casing is shaped in a hydraulic press. Part of the afterburner casing is welded. The various parts of the casing are fitted together, ready to receive the engine components. In the busy engine shop, women work beside men in a variety of occupations, surface grinding, milling and inspection. Some of the women are migrants who have had experience in machine shops overseas. The nine-stage axial flow compressor, a vital part of the jet engine, contains no less than 110 blades. The concentricity of the completely assembled compressor rotor is tested. Turbine blades are checked for tip clearance.
The starter motor is oiled and the engine is ready for its first test run. The engine itself weighs 3,100 pounds and is 21 feet 7 inches in length. With afterburner, it can deliver well over 13,000 pounds of thrust and hurl the Mirage into the air in a takeoff run of less than 1,000 yards. From close range, its blast of power is almost frightening. In the engine test center, instruments record all aspects of the performance. Fuel and oil flow, temperatures and air pressures are recorded as the engine is run through its full range. The vibration characteristics of the engine are traced on paper rolls. At the Department of Supplies factory at Avalon, the finished components are fitted together and the aircraft assumes its sleek, deadly lines. A total pressure probe which operates the flight instruments is fitted. French engineers and technicians work beside their Australian counterparts. Here the rugged landing gear is given a final check before the aircraft is wheeled out for its taxi and flight trials. A young RAAF pilot climbs into the cockpit eager to put the Mirage through its paces. Any faults will be rectified before the machine is finally handed over to the Air Force. RAAF pilots who tested the first Australian built aircraft converted to the Mirage in France. Before going overseas they completed a course in French at the RAAF School of Languages at Point Cook. The Mirage takes to the air like a bird. An all-weather fighter interceptor, it's the fastest aircraft ever in the Southern Hemisphere. Although much of the performance figures of the Mirage have not been disclosed, the aircraft has been widely acclaimed throughout the world. It can be flown at twice the speed of sound. It is particularly versatile and can be fitted with a variety of weapon systems. It will not even be necessary for the Mirage pilot to see his target. His target-seeking radar will search out the enemy far beyond the range of human eyes. The Mirage is equally superior in the role of a ground attack aircraft. Its low pressure tyres enable it to operate from makeshift landing areas if necessary. Using its brake chute, the Mirage can stop on landing in less than 800 yards. Its maiden flight over, the Mirage taxis back to its hangar. The Mirage will gradually replace the Sabre fighter in squadron service throughout the RAAF and will put Australia in the forefront of fighter defence for years to come. pleased young pilot leaves the cockpit to receive the congratulations of the men who have spent many hours preparing the aircraft for its first flight. January the 29th, 1964 was an historic occasion when the Prime Minister Sir Robert Menzies and Cabinet Ministers were present at the official handing over to the Air Force of the logbooks of the first Mirages. Distinguished guests and senior officers of the armed services were among the 800 people who heard the Prime Minister describe the Mirage as a production miracle. The Minister for Supply, Mr. Fairhall, officially handed over the logbooks to the Minister for Air, Mr. Fairbairn. Mr. Fairbairn described the Mirage as an incredible aircraft, which in one stroke had doubled the speed of the RAAF's fighter defence. After the handing over, the Prime Minister took a close-up look at the Mirage. Press and television cameramen gathered around as Sir Robert inspected the cockpit layout. Two of the new fighters then gave the first public demonstration in Australia. In the words of the Prime Minister, there is no finer fighter than this in the whole world. 